the legs of the protractor are completely touching the faces of the V-blocks. Once I'm doing, done doing that, and I know it's set, I'll lock this in place, and once that's locked in place, uh, I can tell you what my angle is going to be. Notice my V-blocks are lined up on the uh, bottoms of the tubing. So even if I'm using quarter inch material or anything like that, I always line up on the bottom. Being that the original Dominator was quarter, one and a quarter inch tubing, um, I'm using one inch tubing. My bends are going to be a little bit different than, than the original West Coast choppers. The reading that I'm getting from my protractor is 155 degrees. Um, one thing you have to remember is because I'm going off 180 degrees, I have to subtract the 150 to actually get my reading, which is 30 degrees up. All right. So I'll take my silver sharpie, and as you can see here, I've written 30 degrees and pointed to the bend. All right. And now it's time to set the beginning line of the bend so I know where to put that into the bender. To do that, I move these V-blocks in. I know that this leg, the left leg of the bend, is going in first. So to set the left end of the bend, left leg of the bend, I'm going to put the front of the bend up against this V-block. I'm going to squish it down so that the face of the V-block is completely touching the face of the tubing. And I'm going to slide it back until the tubing intersects with the face of this V-block. At which point, I'm going to mark on my paper template with a silver sharpie the black line off of the tubing. That tells me where to line the beginning of my material up in the bender in accordance with the way that the bender works. Okay? So I'll mark that and move the bender template to the side. I will then take my second V-block coming from the left leg of the paper template and I will set it up so that it is perpendicular to the uh, left leg and I will scribe my line all the way across the paper template. And now I'm done with the V-blocks. I set those to the side <coughs> and what I'm left with is a uh, line here that tells me where to begin my bend on my material and I can now measure the distance from the end here back to my line to tell me how far back on the material to start. I am about 14 and 3 quarters. Um, we can call it 15 to have a little bit of wiggle room and that will allow me to trim off at the axle area. Um, that way I get a nice tight fit and the TIG welds come in really nice and tight. So let's get the material over here and start <coughs> making a bend. So, all right. I get my material from a local source and I'm actually getting my DOM for about $3 a, school, $3 a uh, tube foot. Um, that's actually a really good deal. Most of the places like online metals and that, you're going to pay five to five fifty a, uh, a tube foot and uh, the more you can save, the more frames you get to build. So. What I'm going to do is line my material up so that the end of it touches my paper template and then I'm going to come in with my silver sharpie and I'm going to mark right there and if you measure it out you'll see it's 15 inches on the dot uh, on the center of this line. Don't forget that part. You have to remember how you measure and where you measure because if you vary it all with that, it will vary how much length you have at the bend. 
and how far back your bend is and it can affect the way your frame goes together. So we're going to stop the tape here and we're going to start loading up the bender so we're going to move the camera over this way and we're going to start the bending.